internet. And then I know he's got to dash off, but we'll take questions for Brigitte or Sandra after Stephen's presentation. So welcome Stephen uh, this morning. So Stephen uh, works for Midlands Connect. He is the, which is the, um, Midlands Connect is the sub-national transport body for the Midlands and, and Stephen is a principal transport planner responsible for managing several key work streams within the Midlands Connect technical programme, which includes alternative fuels for freight and rural, rural mobility. So he's just going to basically talk about one of the projects he's been uh, involved with, which shines a different light, perhaps, on some of the opportunities and challenges we face. So over to Stephen. Thanks, Vicky. Um, can everyone hear me OK, for one? <laughs> yeah, all good. OK, um, so thanks for that introduction. Um, <clears throat> I'm sort of hoping today just to give you a bit of an update um, with regards to what we at Midlands Connect um, have been doing um, with the alternative fuels um, sector. Um, we've particularly focused on the freight and logistics um, uh, issue here. If we could just move on to the next slide, please. Uh, just to give you a bit of context um, with regards to A, who we are and B, what, what we've been doing. So Midlands Connect is the subnational transport body uh, for the Midlands. Um, essentially, we're a partnership of the local authorities, um, LEPs and Chambers of Commerce. Um, and we are obviously focused on looking at transport issues and securing transport investment uh, for the Midlands. Um, this particular study um, sort of began um, midway through 2019, actually. So we've been going for a couple of years with this, just trying to unearth some of the, the challenges and opportunities associated with uh, the uh, adoption of alternative fuels in the freight and logistics sector. Um, just to put things into context, um, based on a carbon baseline um, study that we did uh, last year, uh, which set to look at the uh, the carbon emissions across the Midlands uh, and where they were coming from with regards to different modes of transport. Um, you can see there that based on the, the national average, um, the Midlands is, 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 is higher. Um, and for that reason, we have reflected that in, in our studies and have focused uh, on HGVs um, and to some extent LGVs uh, and, and the wider freight and logistics sector as a whole, as a target for um, attempting to reduce emissions. Um, so just, just to give you a bit of context as to why um, the emissions might be higher, um, we've got a significant proportion of the strategic road network, which is the, the network run by Highways England, so our motorways and, and A roads. Um, and we've got a high proportion of uh, businesses in the manufacturing and logistics sector um, compared to the national average. Um, so essentially, that, that's kind of why, why we decided to, to do this piece of work. Um, can we just roll on to the next slide, please? Um, so, as I mentioned, we've been working on this for a while now. Phase one um, essentially looked at uh, trying to identify the barriers and opportunities associated with um, alternative fuels and freight and logistics. Um, and as part of that, we looked at um, developing an understanding of the uh, existing policies and the objectives around um, alternative fuels, uh, particularly at the freight and logistics sector, but also more widely in terms of the, um, the shift towards a green economy. Um, and green transport as a whole. Um, we, th we then look to actually go out and engage directly with the fleet operators themselves, the infrastructure providers, um, and obviously our local authority partners uh, and other uh, similar organizations working in this space. Um, we then looked at trying to identify some future needs with regards to infrastructure. Um, so what you'll notice throughout the work, we've, we've made a serious emphasis on looking at the infrastructure shortages, because that's primarily what we, we focus on as an organisation uh, in terms of securing investment. Uh, and then finally, as part of the end of phase one, we developed a, a Midlands wide vision uh, and an associated action plan for achieving that. Um, and then we, we moved things on specifically looking at the um, infrastructure needs um, to try and establish a bit of a short term um, series of objectives and and essentially sites uh, or broadly speaking areas where um, recharging and refueling infrastructure would make sense to put down in the short term um, in order to try and um, uh, sort of encourage and instill and invigorate the market to, to uh, invest in alternative fuels. So if we just roll on to the next slide, I'm just going to give you a bit of background and um, some, on some of the findings from the phase one study, first of all. 
just move on to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so essentially what the phase one research uh, revealed was, um, first of all, there was an inconsistency in terms of the approach from uh, the various local authorities. Um, naturally, this is always gonna be the case. You've got various political um, parties involved and uh, as a result, different priorities there. But we found that there was a clear disparity in, in the approach and that, that can often lead to issues. Um, so, as I said, lack of common approach in terms of reducing carbon emissions across the board um, and air quality levels. Um, but this also extends to both regional levels and national levels. So not only do we notice um, differences within the Midlands area, but also uh, when compared to other regions uh, and, and the national objectives. Um, and what we found was that HGVs um, are significantly uh, they're approached very differently across the local authority areas. Um, some are paying serious attention to them and recognise the um, how much they're involved in, in the issue. Uh, and others are obviously, probably due to resourcing issues, are, are, are focused more, more broadly at the, the economy itself, um, but haven't gone to that extent. Um, what we also found was there was a lack of awareness and understanding from the businesses themselves with regards to what the government was hoping for and the objectives um, and, and the policies coming out of government. There was a bit of a, a discrepancy in terms of what businesses were, were thinking they should be aiming for. Um, and, um, and this is sort of evidenced by the lack of guidance. Um, and essentially this leads to an unpredictable demand uh, in the market. Um, and obviously then you can see just with the, the little, uh, the graphic there in the bottom right, you know, essentially with the limited demand, um, you also find then that the infrastructure providers are not willing to invest either. And you end up with this sort of chicken and egg scenario, this sort of vicious circle. Um, and what we've, what we've found is that uh, when looking at other examples across the world, that, that there is often a need for a public sector to, to get involved and at least lay down the foundations for um, the, the rest of the market to, to pick up from. Um, so if we could just roll on to the next slide. Um, just some, just some uh, sort of overarching kind of um, take home points from our engagement with industry. And we found that there was a significant potential for an incohesive network of infrastructure. So as I mentioned, your different local authorities are investing different levels of uh, effort in this. And what you can end up then is a disjointed network, which uh, as we're all aware, HGVs are running from ports to, and, from, and from airports to various um, warehouses. And they're not really constrained geographically, they're moving across large proportions of the country and therefore uh, with an incohesive network of infrastructure, um, essentially you're not going to get the buy-in from businesses in terms of uh, purchasing these new fleets. Um, there were some questions around where the fuels themselves are going to come from, so particularly hydrogen is, a, is, is an emerging um, option in terms of fuels for uh, HGVs, however there's some serious questions about where, where we might be getting our hydrogen from in the future. Um, the actual lack of the vehicles on the market, there's still some questions um, hanging over whether the, uh, so 44 tonne trucks are, are sort of what, what, the, uh, what the industry would, would be using and essentially I think it was only at the back end of last year that uh, the first 44 tonne truck trial took place in Eindhoven, so we're still um, with a bit of lack of choice for the market, so without the choice, again, um, people are, are hesitant to invest. Um, the costs themselves, as I'm sure you're, you're well aware, new technology, there's always a premium attached. So there's, there's also that issue to consider. Um, the lack of the infrastructure network, as I mentioned, um, again, is a key obstacle to get over. But also, uh, and surprisingly almost in, in the engagement, the, the skills gap was brought up but only by a small number of businesses. And it's something that isn't often talked about as, as we uh, have found um, as we were going through this study, but it's something that I feel is an obvious gap and that's why I was pleased when Vicky uh, invited me to speak today. So I'm, I'm hoping we can start to get everyone thinking about this in the future. So if you just roll on to the next slide. Um, as I said, we, we were focused uh, in terms of looking at what we could influence, what we could impact upon. Um, and the infrastructure itself and looking at where the infrastructure is best positioned to, to satisfy the demand was something that we felt as if we could do very well. 
we've got a really good handle on the um, the demand on the the road networks, but also obviously uh, on rail. So it's important to also note that although this is focused on road transport, which is um, which is sort of the key key contributor for the uh, higher carbon emissions, there's also a need to look at rail um, and rail freight as well. But essentially here. What we've done is we identified, um, based on the demand on the strategic road network, uh, 66 locations across the Midlands um, where demand would require um, HGV charging and refueling stations. So to get to this point, we used um, some top-down data, which relies on our Midlands Highway model, um, which was um, originally uh, Highways England's model. Um, and we also looked at Highways England's existing service station locations and what they'd done in terms of that, that study that they'd uh, recently, in the last couple of years, they, they took part in. Uh, and then also some bottom-up data. So um, as we engaged with the businesses themselves, at looking at what they felt were the, the key obstacles um, and opportunities associated with alternative fuels, we also asked them, well, where would you put recharging and refueling to suit your needs? And we added quite a few number of sites based on that, um, as we noticed trends. Um, if we could just roll on to the next slide, please. Um, and this led us on to um, phase two um, of, of the study. So uh, last year, um, a project managed the, the phase two part, uh, which essentially took that infrastructure map that you just saw on the last slide. Um, and look to develop um, what's called a multi-criteria appraisal tool that essentially looked at various uh, criterion to, um, to try and establish some short-term opportunities in terms of sites for recharging and refueling infrastructure. So we took the 66 locations, we took the, um, the tool um, and looked at some of the emerging national and local policy and tried to establish um, a series of shortlisted sites. So in terms of within the tool, We've got there the potential refueling capacity, so looking at the existing gas infrastructure, the existing um, grid capacity um, to, to try and establish uh, sort of green spots uh, as opposed to black spots uh, where, where, where the infrastructure could be best positioned. Um, we also looked at the strategic location of the site itself, how close it was to sort of intermodal freight interchanges, for example. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we used the uh, models that we have at our disposal to look at the volume of freight passing through these locations and uh, operator license data, which is um, publicly available data, which gave us an indication of where um, businesses were situated and the size of their fleets. Um, we did this and we still found there's obviously some gaps that we wanted to look at, some next steps. Um, so looking at, um, you know, having 11 shortlisted sites is great, but we now needed to start engaging with our local authority partners again, looking at ways that we could make things easier for businesses to, um, to uh, invest in the sites themselves. So it looks at land ownership, planning consent, etc. cetera. Um, and essentially that's where we're taking things next, hopefully. Um, if we could just roll on to the next slide, please. Um, so above all this, we obviously set out a vision um, and what we want for the Midlands is, is for us to, to lead in the adoption of alternative fuels. We want to make sure that the network is equipped to uh, cope with the demand. Uh, we also want the Midlands to act as a knowledge hub. We want you know, the existing um, research uh, organisations here to, to continue their, their great work uh, and lead the way, hopefully. Um, and then finally, we want to be the place where the trials are taking place. We want to want to lead the way in that in that respect as well. And um, that's evidenced by recent bids that have gone into government for um, potential uh, trials and innovation projects. Um, just roll on to the next slide, please. Um, just briefly, where we see Midlands Connect acting in this space, you know, we, we see ourselves as a body that can coordinate and collaborate. So speaking to you today to try and Raise, your, raise awareness across the board um, and we're engaging with DFT and our local authority partners. Um, as I mentioned, we're supporting technology trials um, uh, and we're looking at trying to identify specific sites that we can build business cases for to make uh, government investment decisions a bit easier. Um, and we also want to continue um, to support the, uh, the research in this, in this space. Um, if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, so as I mentioned, one of the things that 
wasn't really picked up on by businesses and I feel, feel as though it was an underestimation and overlook, uh, it was, they were overlooking this uh, to some degree, is um, the skills shortage, the skills gap that is unquestionably going to appear um, as, as, we, as we take forward this agenda. Um, so there's some key areas that I feel as though we probably need, uh, probably need people to train towards. So you've got the vehicle design, operation, maintenance, um, we've got the actual infrastructure itself, how it's going to be constructed, operated and maintained as well, and also looking at the energy production issues um, in terms of uh, where it's going to come from and what type of uh, hydrogen, for example, we're producing or able to produce. Um, now, it's worth mentioning Midlands Engine, um, which we are a part of or an arm of, so to speak. They are working in this space um, and it's something that was considered as part of a recent bid um, in terms of some feasibility studies for uh, a potential trial uh, for hydrogen vehicles. But I feel as though we need to continue to raise awareness across the board. Um, so it's, it's good to see everyone here today to, to sort of join in that, that agenda and uh, hopefully um, sharing what I have with you today has, has um, sort of encouraged you and instilled some um, some thought in terms of where we can uh, where we can tackle the skills gap in the future. Thank you, Steve. Steve, and I'm I'm sorry you've had to race through that, but yeah, so, sorry, Vicky, I've had to ru I've rushed as quickly as I could. <laughs> you did brilliantly, thank you. And it, it it's I think hopefully what we've got there is an oversight of some of the opportunities and challenges for construction, manufacturing, transport. You know, and you highlighted that it's not always a, the main point of what you what you're doing but it's intrinsic mm -hmm. to those infrastructure and innovation projects so thank you very much if anyone's got questions for Stephen I know he's got to go please pop them in the yeah. chat email us and I can forward them to Stephen if you've got an idea for you know some sort of transport innovation projects as well please pop them in or, or send them over to us and I can introduce you uh, and we can take it from there so thank you very much uh, thank you everyone